what gave birth to Palm Sunday. We saw from John chapter 12. We read 1 to 13 in the first service. We are going to read 13 to 23 in this second service. Now, in the first service, I told us that what led to Palm Sunday, according to John's documentation in John chapter 12, they held a dinner in honor of our Lord Jesus because of Lazarus that he rose from the dead. Now, and while they were at the dinner meeting, you know, they call it a supper, uh, eating together, a lot of people gathered to see Lazarus as a proof that actually Jesus raised him from the dead, a man who was already buried four days. Now, as these people were gathering, the Bible says, some set of you gathered to see Lazarus, some set of you gathered to kill Jesus and Lazarus. Because it was documented in John 12, 1 to 13, that people were coming to Christ because of Lazarus. So Jesus now stood up from the dinner meeting and decided to go to Jerusalem. It was while he was going, information that Jesus is coming to Jerusalem got to the people's hear, uh, hearing. They now decided, how can we honor him? How can we honor him? They now did what we do now. Now, we call it in our generation, red carpet reception, where you put red carpet, you know, to welcome a guest, an important guest. So, they didn't have carpet in their days. They went as far as sacrificing to show how important Jesus is or was to them. They climbed the palm tree, very tall. You know, it is a science that makes palm tree now to be short and still produce coconut. You know, like I have two in our compound at the level. They are not as tall as I am. They told me in three and a half years' time, I mean, three and a half years, they'll produce. So I'm waiting. Two years have gone. So I'm expecting fruits in one and a half years' time. Hallelujah. So, but in their own days, science had not made palm trees short. It was still tall. So to show how important Jesus was, you know, to them, they climbed the trees, cut palm branches, and put on the floor, saying, you are important to us. And I told them in the first service, Palm Sunday lesson one is to show you that if you touch lives for good, if you make impact, both God and men will honor you. That was what we studied in the first service, that we are born to touch lives. You cannot have access to the realm of honor if you don't touch any life. That life is beyond living for yourself. And I taught them three ways to touch life. I said, number one, start by what? Discovering what you have and how you can use what you have to, uh, for, the, for the kingdom of God and to touch lives. That what Jesus did for Lazarus was not to give money. You don't need money to touch lives. You need to discover what you have in order to touch people's lives. And I gave an illustration. Everybody will know that there's a young man that stands at the junction of Liberty Road. He does not have money. He does not even have education. Uh, he used to be a tout, but he found a way of blessing lives. He will stand at the junction to control traffic from morning till evening. And people give him money a lot. That's what he has. And he has decided to use what he has to do what? To better his environment. And people are taking care of him for it. That you cannot have access to honor until you begin to touch lives. Number two, in the service, we talked about second way to touch life. I said, see life as being beyond, I have enough for myself. Live beyond living for yourself. Begin to think of how you can impact others. And number three, I said, you will touch life if you do not allow the attitude of nine discourage you. Instead, pay attention to the testimony of the one that returned. We saw that from Luke 17, 12 to 19. That one leper that returned came back to Jesus to say thank you. But most times we get discouraged when we do what? We pay too much attention to the discouragement or that the nine spread. That I did good to so many people, they didn't return. Don't let that one move you. Hallelujah. I don't want to go back to it now. Now in this now service, the second lesson we are going to be learning from Palm Sunday is, I want to be teaching you, as God has revealed to me, when God begins to honor you, what are you to do with the honor? When God begins to honor you, what will you do? And this is what I've, the way I've framed it. 
temptations you must avoid the moment the Lord begins to honor you. Hallelujah. So let's read. Show us on screen. John chapter 12 from verse 13 to verse 23. We all are going to honor God as we rise up to read together these verses. John chapter 12, 13 to 23. Can we all rise in honor of God's word as we read together? After the count of three, we'll read. One, two, and let's go. Three. Took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Can you see that Palm Sunday is all about honor to Jesus? Let's go 14. Then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it is written. He sat on it as it is written. 15. Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. That's the way it was written. 16. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. 17. We'll stop at 23. Let's go. Therefore, the people who were with him, when he had called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, bore witness. 18. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done this sign. 19. The Pharisees therefore said among themselves, You see that you are accomplishing nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. 20. Now, there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. 21. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. All these things are important. So, 22. Philip came and told Andrew. And in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. They didn't take them along. They went to tell him. 23. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Can you take your seats gloriously in God's presence? God is going to speak to us today. In this service, in the name of Jesus. Say big, a bigger amen. amen. Now listen, I'm going to be slower this in this service so that I can live longer. Amen. I preached in the first service with fire. So wisdom demands that I should reduce the fire. In fact, my doctor friend told me, he said, Pastor Prince, you are one of the pastors that will last so long. I said, why? He said, I watch your preachings. You're very quiet and you're preaching, very gentle. You preach, with, uh, you, are, you, are, you preach conveniently. Who taught you? I said, nobody taught me. The Holy Spirit told me that I should not preach like I'm preaching my last message. You know, the way some people preach, they preach as if they are preaching their last message. That's why you see them fall down the pulpits and collapse. But if you look at our lineage, our spiritual lineage, my father and the Lord, Bishop Tawa Adela, doesn't shout to preach. He's, uh, I think he's going to be 60 very soon. His father in the Lord, Bishop David Oedeko, doesn't shout to preach. And uh, Bishop Oedeko's father, Pastor E. E. Adeboe, doesn't shout. To... So uh, in our lineage, we don't fall down on the altar. Because we understand rest. My mentor will tell us that I always divide the day. I always divide the day. You say by 4 p.m. every day, I sleep for two hours. Even if the heavens are falling, my staff know that they must not wake me up. Even if heaven is falling. Anything that must fall should fall after I have woken up. And you too, if God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that does not have flesh, that is a spirit, walk for seven days and observe one day leave. Seven days, one, uh, walks for six days, one day leave. Every six day he walks, seven day he goes on leave. God, not to talk about you, that is flesh and blood. Some of you say, I, I, Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. I think in the night and walk in the day. You will soon die. Because the Bible says to them that he loves, he blessed with deep sleep. 
deep sleep, not even just sleep, deep sleep. Let's leave that for another day. Now, let's look at this. Jesus had already been honored at Iwoye from verse 1 to verse 12. People have cut down branches and they have put it down, you know, and he had rode on, on it, sitting on the, uh, the donkey, and it was good. There was, you know, before he sat on the donkey, they had put palm trees. But if you read, look at where we read from verse 13 to 16, you will see that he was walking barefoot before. All of a sudden, he got a donkey and sat on it. You know why he sat on that donkey? He sat on the donkey because it was written that he must enter Jerusalem sitting upon a donkey. He must not enter into Jerusalem walking. He must sit on the donkey. That's what was written in the word of God for him. Please follow me. We are going somewhere. So everybody was surprised. When he was walking before, he just suddenly saw a donkey, took it, sat on it. And the Bible says, even his disciples didn't understand what was happening until after he was glorified. They now went back to the writings. They now said, ah, ah even Isaiah had written it to, Isaiah has written that the Messiah is coming. He's going to ride uh, on a donkey into Jerusalem. Now, why am I talking about this topic? Temptations you should avoid the moment the Lord begins to honor you. Let's look at the first one. The temptation, the first temptation you must avoid, the moment God begins to honor you is this. The temptation to want to live a life that is not biblical. Can I tell you this truth? The most dangerous time in the life of a person is when God begins to bless him. Now, a time when you can afford anything you desire is the most dangerous time of our lives. You know, if we say, okay, let's declare a fast and you don't have food to eat, it is easy to fast. You know? Now, it, it will become difficult for you to fast when you have all the food you can cook or you can eat, you can just warm in your fridge. And you have a microwave. The most, mo the most difficult time. That's why the devil puts serious temptations around our life. The moment God begins to honor us. And the greatest temptation we face when we are honored is this. The temptation to want to live a life that is not biblical. A life that is not guided by divine instruction. A life that is not guided by divine instruction. I come again. A life that is not guided. By divine instruction. That is the greatest temptation we face as Christians. Now you should understand this. That the moment you become born again. You know what you have signed? You have signed to live your life. According to the word of God. Not according to the tradition of the land. Not according to the instruction of men. Even according to the, uh, your culture. You are supposed to begin to live your life. The moment you give your life to Jesus Christ. According to the written word. Hear me. And the revealed word. Now the written word is this Bible. The revealed word is the interpretation that the Holy Spirit gives to us in our hearts. Hello? But there is this temptation. That the moment you become blessed. The moment God is lifting you. And can I tell you this truth? That is where several Christians are falling. Now that is the point so many Christians get to. You will see that they reduce in their prayer life. You see that they reduce in their study life. You even see that they begin to reduce in their commitment in church. Why? There is this temptation that the devil places in your heart the moment God is honoring you that come on, live a free life. Be free now. But you see that Jesus our Lord, even with the honor of God, people were cutting down branches. He remembered that way to, way to, not supposed to enter Jerusalem Without a donkey. It is written that I must enter sitting upon a donkey. I wrote here. If you will manage. Uh, sorry. If you will not manage. Uh, 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 oh, sorry. 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 I jumped it. Honor. If not well managed. Will prompt you into unnecessary carelessness. In the name of freedom. Let me come, come, let me come again. Honor. If not well managed will prompt you into unnecessary carelessness in the name of freedom. Honor, if well not managed, will prompt you into unnecessary carelessness in the name of freedom. 
They are she belongs. She bless me. She be we can afford to take breakfast to church. She be we can afford to take two cars. She be we can afford. She be we can. So many people that you think are in the presence of God are no longer there again. So many people are now seeing that there is no reason to pray. When whatsoever they want, they can use money to. Hello. Now, who actually told us that prayer is all about talking to God about our needs? That's one of the things we got wrong. That's why you see that as God blesses people, they begin to drop. They begin to drop in their commitment. Now, people who were workers before will begin to say, we see no reason. I'm busy. I want to do this at this particular time. Oh, this is the best time convenient for me to do this. And listen. One thing you should know about our enemy, the devil, is that I always tell people, the devil is not strong. The only thing the devil does is to capitalize on our careless openings. The devil is like a football coach. Once he sights an opening in the team of the opponent, he will look for one of his strikers. You know what? I have seen something. That man at the defense is very, very weak. You know what you are going to do for me now? You are the, most, the, the man that has the highest speed in my team. I will tell them to pass the balls to you or cross it over. Just use a sharp turning to beat him. That's what the devil does. Hallelujah. And that's where so many children of God are falling. There's this temptation to live an unguided life. I wrote here, no matter how much God bless you, do not allow it to determine the kind of life you live. No matter how much God bless you, don't allow the blessing to determine the kind of life you will live. Now, you can afford to say, I'm going to, be, I'm going to take breakfast in, in Ibadan and take lunch or dinner in Abuja. Yeah, because you can afford it. You know, before if you can't afford it, you, will, you, you desire, but well, God, is it your will? Praise the Lord. That was the first temptation Jesus conquered. The people were still singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. All of a sudden, they say, wait, wait, wait. When Jerusalem, he quickly saw one. Listen, you want to walk this Christian and actually make heaven as a child of God. Always weigh your life, weigh your decisions, the choices you are making in life on the written word of God. Always weigh it. That what I am doing is it is what I'm doing by Blika. Always wait. Yes, everybody is saying, okay, do it this way, do it this. What I am about doing now is this scripture. If it is not, please drop it. Hallelujah. People were surprised. I wrote here, when Jesus, our Lord, suddenly got upon a donkey, he did that because it was written that he should ride a donkey into Jerusalem. Hear me. It is much easier to fall when you are honored than when you are struggling. It is much easier to fall when you are honored than when you are struggling. Very easy to fall when you are honored. Because when you are honored, you have what it takes to afford every of your choices. You don't even need to seek the face of God again. Somebody says, I can buy it. It does not cost me anything to go and get a new car now. May you not get the one that will kill you. But you know, when you are are not yet there, you want to pray, Lord, Lord, and if God does not desire, he may not provide. There's a kind of freedom that honor brings. I come again. There's a kind of freedom that honor brings. And if you are not careful, that may be the gateway to hell. So no matter how much God blesses you, you know one of the things you should maintain? Maintain a personal Bible study life. No matter how much God bless you. Let me greet those online. Uh, that's me. So Lubo Latifashe, God bless you. You're online. They are hiding me, so I want to hide them back. God bless you. So what am I saying? No matter how much God blesses you, continue to maintain a personal Bible study life. God's judgment will be from here at the end time. When we always stand before him, his judgment will be from here. That's why as a child of God, maintain your relationship with the Bible. I was discussing with some set of people. And they, uh, we're discussing about the end time. Jesus said, the, the, one disciple came to him, Master, Master, tell us, what will be the sign of the end time? What will be the sign? You know the first thing Jesus said? He shook his head. 
He said, watch out. That no one deceive you. It shows that the number one sign of the end time is that there will be mass deception. He did not stop there. He now said, for many, many shall come in my name. Which means that this deception will be in the name of Christ. Now, and in my own word, I always say that it means that at the end time, there will be so much emphasis on the anointed. And when your mama was anointed, the car carry one wag that be or along. So, which means that there will be a shift in the churches of in the church. There will be the teachings that will grow people's life attitude will be scarce. Then there will now be focus for the miraculous. Now, and because of the focus for the miraculous, people will want to do anything they tell them to say, I mean to do, because of what they want to get. Uh, shaking the baby more, shaking the baby more, shaking the baby more. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's the sign of the end time. That's why you see that we hear all over the place, hey, this particular pastor took so and so person's wife. I always tell them, I don't blame that pastor that took your wife. I blame you and your wife that has your Bible, but you cannot read it. Hello, answer me. So, at the end time, that's what we are looking at. As God begins to honor you, increase your personal commitment to the word of God. Now, let's go further. Let's go further. Living a word-based life, W R D, a word-based life is when you decide to guide your choices by the written word of God. That's what it means to live a word-based life. That you've decided every of my choice will be guided by the written word. Every of my choice. Everything I want to do. Everything I want to do. Now, which means that as a child of God, before you do anything, the first question you must ask and answer, is it in line with the Bible? How many Christians behave like that today? That's why you see that. You see Christians that God is blessing will decide to avoid church service to attend the party. Now, when they say it's church service, oh, pastor, I'm so busy. But when there is party, I'm, I'm available. Now, you see Christians that God is lifting up. Some will decide to even buy a shwebi of their friend's occasion than to tithe. Ah, one remi loan shinkon, mukbodo rasho one. But are you a tighter? Why? They were they are gradually drifting away. And listen, I always tell people: if you are not within the coverage of the word of God, you are not saved. I don't know how I'm to say that one in Yoruba language. You are not saved. When you are in line with the word, then you enjoy perfect divine protection. If Jesus had walked into Jerusalem, the Pharisees that had wanted to kill him would have killed him. Because if he had walked into Jerusalem, he would have gone directly against the word. His protection, listen, is guaranteed as long as he's living his, his, his life in the word. I want to show us something. Show me Ezekiel chapter 6. Let's, ah, it's so long ago, we might jump some verses. Let's see how God desires to take care of us. Ezekiel chapter 6, I think let's start from, let's start from verse 6. I didn't write it in my notes. I wrote it somewhere. I was just studying, I saw it. Ezekiel chapter 6, chapter 16, sorry, from verse 6. Ezekiel 16 from verse 6. Look at how much God loves us. Ezekiel chapter 16 from verse 6. Follow this reading. God is saying, and when I passed by you and saw you struggling in your own blood, I said to you, in your blood, live. Yes, I said to you, in your blood, live. Let's read from the NIV version, please. NIV. I made you thrive like a plant in the field. Who is speaking? God. And you grew, grew, matured, and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed, 
and your hair grew, but you were naked and bare. God is still speaking you know, for you to see how much he loves us. Where are you? Where are you? We have jumped all this place now. We have, take, we have gone through this. Now we are in verse 8. Later, I passed by. And when I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love, God is the one speaking, you know, I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your nakedness. I gave you my sole, solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. Now, it didn't stop there. I baited you with water and washed the blood from you and put ointment on you. You see all what we call the blessing, the blessing, the blessing. You can't walk with God and God will leave you the same. But if you now walk with God, God is now decorating your life. You now, because God is blessing you, you are now saying, God, you say, I don't have time for you again. I don't have time for you again. You hurt him. Now, let's go on. I clothed you with embroidered dress. Cherokee embroidered in And put leather sandals, Brazilian, on you. I dressed you in fine linen and covered you with costly garments. Shagad, abasontoye. I adored you with what? Jewelry. I put bracelet on your arms and a necklace around your neck. God wants us to live a dignified life. And I put a ring on your nose. Who did this? God! I put a ring on your nose, earrings on your ears, and a beautiful crown on your head. You know, that's why I always tell these people that preach, earring is a sin, earring is a sin. Alone, alone, decorate, I want to hear, Lele, yo. Oh yeah, where are you now? Ah. We are going a long way. Don't remove that scripture. This is a Bible teaching church. So you were adored with gold and silver. Your clothes were of fine lining and costly fabric and embroidered clothes. Your food was fine flour, honey, and olive oil. You became very beautiful and rose to be a queen. That's where God loves to take us to. And your fame spread among the nations. On account of your beauty. Because of the splendor I had given you. Don't forget. It's not you that gave yourself. Everything you think you have. You didn't give yourself. Wherever you think you are. You didn't take yourself. Whatever level you think you have entered. You didn't take yourself there. God opened the door for you to get there. I had given you. And made your beauty perfect. Declares who? The sovereign Lord. Let's move on. Verse 15. But you trusted in your beauty. This is where we miss it. We now get to a point. Leave that scripture and hold it. We now get to a point. Sister, why are you no longer in the choir? Brother, why are you no longer in church? The church needs your talent, your giftings. Where are you? Uh, Pastor, you don't understand. You don't understand. The things that God himself gave you. Can you see what, the, what we are doing to God? Leave that scripture on screen. Now, I'm showing you why Jesus decided to say, I am going on the donkey. I don't know. If they say come to church, is it for the benefit of the pastor? It is not. If they say give an offering, it's not for the pastor. You are, whatever you are doing, you are doing it for yourself. And whatever level God has taken you now, it's just a tip in the ice bag. God is, God see, what he has in stock, he said, but you trusted in your beauty and you used your fame to become a prostitute. You know, at times I wonder, hello, me, what do not see that non church? Ole she, Thousands of things enter to bad day church. How can she small thing? Now that's what it means to become a prostitute with your fame. Anything God is giving you, it is for his sake. Woman so for Lord on to lilu ulu ama for me. On to lilu fun ogun e ma fun mi o. That's why if God asks for my wife, asks for my children, I am at will. Please go and serve God. I always tell my children. Go serve God. Ki she time to mark one church. Lo mani kama mawe. 
My children spend more time in church than anywhere. One of my daughters was chosen to go and represent her school. When she now came, he said, Daddy, I met Hero in that competition. I met, he was mentioning people. I said, can you see that at the top is space for few. He said, I represented my school. I did maths, 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 maths competition, some physics, some chemistry. But they are, every school presented their best students. And I told her, I said, can you see? And I asked my children, do you know that we are mostly in church than at home? Mostly in church than at home. That's why Bishop Oedeko, we always say, it's like he's bragging. If we don't get to this realm, I will be disappointed. Why will you keep your own children? So if you ask, don't go to church, don't go to church. Let them serve God. Let them be useful for God. One of my children already in the university too. You know, the way the lecturers talk about, I, I, I just don't want you just continue what you are doing. Continue. Just like what uh, um, the wife of our former president used to say, continue. Madam Patience. What am I saying? Don't use what God is blessing you with. That gift, that talent, that money, that opportunity. Don't use it against the Lord. Don't let God begin to regret that. Ah, maybe I made a mistake. You know, God to use to regret. I've seen it about three times in the Bible. God said about Saul, I regret that I made him king. You know, I'm treating, I've been treating Saul in the morning. If you're online, I preach every morning, 6.10 to 6.30. We've been studying the book of, uh, the, the, the story of Saul's life. God said to Saul, I regret that I made him king. He said to Samuel, sorry, I regret that I made Saul king. Now, listen, you lavish your favors on anyone who pass by and your beauty became his. Imagine. Children of God that cannot afford to say, okay, you know what? You know what? It's coming anniversary. Uh, or, or all the ministers that minister, I will be buying one, one crate of drinks for you. You can afford to buy drinks for people outside. That's lavishing God's provision on rubbish. Next verse. You took some of your garments to make godly high places. Where you carried on. Where are you now? You took, okay, the fine jewelry I gave you. The jewelry made of gold and silver. And you made for yourself male idols and engaged in prostitution with them. Wait for me here. You know this particular verse? A man took it and wrote a book. Why you must not wear a ring. And took from this verse. And started preaching to people that wearing of earring is wrong. He forgot that, listen, whatsoever God gives you, it's not a sin. But you can turn it to a sin. I can turn this puppy to a sin. I can turn this microphone to an idol. Let's move. Let's move on. Pastor Michael is online. God bless you. You also took the fine jewelry I gave you. The jewelry made of gold and silver. And you have, I think I've read this. Next verse, next verse, next verse. 18. And you took your embroidered clothes and put them on them. And you offered my oil and incense before them. 19. Also the food I provided for you, the fine flour, olive oil, and honey I gave you to eat. You offered us fragrant incense before them. This is what happened, declares the sovereign Lord. God is saying, uh -uh. and you took your sons and daughters whom you brought to me and sacrificed them as food for the, to the idols. Was your prostitution not enough? You slaughtered my children and sacrificed them to the idols. You know what it means to slaughter your children? Children that God has given to you that you are supposed to release for the things of God. You because of the pursuit of their academics. Things of this life. That, 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 that does not have eternal relevance. You need to me to know. You are not supposed to be in him. No, don't, don't, don't stay in fellowship, house fellowship. Don't stay in clinical fellowship. No, I don't want to see you. Close from church. Go to read your book. Close from church. Don't even join worker. Ah, for people's children are the reason why we can watch messages online. Some people are there. Other people's children. 
Some people's children are behind the power. That's when we can have gen. Some people's children are playing keyboard. Where are your own? The Joshua said, as for me and my household, that's the covenant. It should be me and my household. Me and my household. That's the covenant. There are times my children will be preparing for exam. They will say, Daddy, our friends used to say, we don't go to church again when we are preparing for exam. Me, I used to tell them, we are different. We will go to church. You say, why? I said, because we are the first family in this church and we must lead by example. That's why when Eniola was to do a, 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 her jam, the score was 170. Mass come, 170. I check Covenant University, 180. Eniola Alpha, she will read in the middle of the night. She'll be carrying her books. At times I'll be seeing her, she'll be reading and she'll be praying. She'll be reading and she'll be praying. She'll be speaking in tongues, she'll be going and coming. I will sleep and wake up, I see see her. When her result came out that she scored 232, I got to uh, Lee City University uh, 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 reg uh, uh, Registrar's Office, that's the admin office, they are sending it. I caught somebody in South Africa, they told me to go and see the person in charge. So as I got there, I saw the chaplain. The chaplain took me to the Registrar's Office. As we got to the Registrar's Office, he said, can I have your daughter's result? She collected it. He said, sir, wow. That jam had the worst results this year. That was last year. That jam had the worst results. For her to have scored 232, let me check if she fits into our mass com. She checked it. Pastor, congratulations. Our mass com cut off is 170. Your daughter made 232. Please, we can go on with the registration. Church, you are saying. We are always in church. Where is her department? She's both in the choir and in the media. They are drawing her in the media. They are drawing her in the choir. And I told her, anywhere they draw, you do. The other one said, ah, Daddy, leave me in the usher. I don't want to sing. I want to be an usher. Stay there. Don't use whatever God is blessing you with to sin against God. Let's go quickly. Let's go quickly. I want you to see the end of that scripture. If we know, we don't finish, because I want to finish the second point too before we leave. And in all your disabled practice and your prostitution, you did not remember the days of your youth when you were naked. When you were naked and bare, kicking about in your blood, have you forgotten? She will look at your coma mubia by. Thomas Okay, you tell your coma joko mubia. She will look at your coma joko to your kitele. Oh, they are for the woman in a long one bless you. What then to a joko? You want no mubia? Oba won, Oba won, or may you yoku. God, look at what God now said. God now said, woe, woe to you, declares the Lord, the sovereign Lord. In addition to all other weak, wickedness, move on, move on. I don't have all the time. You built a mound for yourself and made a lofty shrine in every public square. You have even forgotten me. Jesus quickly went on the donkey. Because he knows, there's no time, leave the rest. He knows that the only way you can make God happy is for you to live a word, word, W-O-R-D, guided life. But there is this temptation you will have when you are honored. And what is that temptation? The temptation to want to live a free life. A what? A free life. Always devote time, daily, in God's presence, hear me, to review your past and present choices. Always devote time. I told God, Father, help me with my family. But one of the ways by which you can reward me for serving you, make my children great. They themselves know. Ask my wife. I I give more money to members than my family, my children. They know. 
They, they are the ones sacrificing. Because I always remember. Ewa miri, ori mi he, owa so mi domore, eh, oh ni ma si, ti, ti a ye. Mi nda gbe bi to ti li mi he, okolo kwa yin ti ga gbe. Koba ni talu ye kufi bubwa ye ma si, i wo ni, oba ti ku. Some of you, God has blessed you beyond evangelism. Oh, tell us, Lord Jesus, anybody, man. So, by the discussion of business, you cannot do discussion of Jesus. So, by the way, I'm born leo, born leo. Jesus, from the day, oh, sorry, go, you get, 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 ah, kill a corner, pal, me. Hello? Answer me now. So don't forget. Are you offended? Always devote time daily in God's presence to review your present and past choices. And let the Holy Spirit use the written word of God to instruct you. That's, that's the number one. Another lesson in this service for Palm Sunday. He didn't like to ride on the donkey. Is it easy to obey God? It's not easy to follow the Bible. Nobody says it's easy. But that's the way to please God. And let me now tell you the one that you like. I've told you the one you didn't like. Second lesson. You will like this one. From verse 20 to verse 23. Second temptation that you will receive, you begin to experience the moment God begins to honor you. And you must avoid it. The temptation to want to remain simple will always cross your mind. The moment God begins to honor you, the temptation to want to, to always, sorry, the temptation to want to remain simple. Now, if you look at the way Jesus organized his ministry, show me verse 20 of um, uh, John chapter 12, 20 to 23. Let's look at it. The Bible says some Greeks came. We want to see Jesus. Who, who approached them? Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast? Verse 21. They came to Philip. Wait. Listen. God told me when I was studying. He said, as I begin to bless you, you must begin to change some simple things you have established. Or else you will die on time. As I begin to honor. You see, when God begins to honor you, there's this temptation to, you know, that crosses your mind that remains simple. There is nothing that exposes us like honor of God. Do you know that the honor of God will, at, will expose helpers and attackers? At the same time, that's why you must conquer that temp temptation of trying to remain simple. I don't want people to feel that I'm becoming difficult to see. Conquer it. It's not biblical. As God is lifting you begin to put security consciousness in your mind. Now listen, and the kind of nation that we are in now, you know what Nigeria is now. Let's learn this as one of the Palm Sunday messages I wrote here. Beloved, the more God puts his honor upon you, the more you should raise a wall of defense around yourself. Now when they came to Philip, Philip did not take them straight. Philip took them to Andrew. Eh, kon le rije subenye, it took them to Andrew. Tolo nou batin ble se, anwa adubo kan wato ni le gbe mo. Ki she ti geraga, the blessing will expose you. To le ba wasa adubo ye, odwe no ma wako na wasi. If somebody like me now, goes to live at Ogunle ye, if arm robbers are coming, the first person they will point to, ah ah, ah ah, wada yek America la wen le iti wa. Philip went to tell Andrew, and Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Andrew and Philip did not take them. Let us go. They said, wait. Let us go and tell Jesus first. They now told Jesus, Jesus, I want a Greek. And there was no documentation where, whether Jesus said, tell them to come. He left them in the congregation. 
One of the lessons for Easter, you must understand. So that, so not for Easter, for Palm Sunday, you must understand this. Don't fall to the temptation of remaining simple. Don't fall to that temptation. Now, what's that temptation? Some people will be trying to talk to you. You are now becoming proud. Uh, can you, can you, can you? Uh, don't fall to that temptation. As God begins to lift you, there are certain things about your life you must change. One of the things you must change is easy access that people have to you. See, I hear now. Or you don't believe it's the word of God? This is how I receive it. See Jesus, how he organized his life after he was honored. It was not like that before. After the Palm Sunday honor, he changed the organization. Change what and where you eat, O oh child of God. Hello, me, but you can see me in the church. You can see me in the church. You can see me in the Onirasi, wa. Kuba jekbe titi, wa joko je. There are some things that you must change about your life. Let me tell you, name say change. I didn't hear you. Change what to eat and where you eat. Some of you can enter just any bukateria anywhere. Listen, even if you are thinking that if you die now, it does not mean anything. That is to you. But do you know that there are some people that they are lifting is tied to your own destiny? If you die now, you put them in trouble. I always tell myself, I want to put my, my children into trouble. I cannot die now. I want to put my children into trouble. I cannot die now. I want to to my children into Change what and where you eat. Apo, can you hear? Change it. Refuse. Sorry. Reduce the information. Le hear me this one. This one. Reduce the information you release about yourself on social media. I don't know why we do things in the extreme in Nigeria. Social, social media. I want to call your motto B. I want to call fan. What's more? It was two years ago I had an encounter, an experience I read somewhere. Before, whenever my children are having their birthday, I'll post it and make comment. But I stopped two years ago because I discovered that what the information the devil needs to attack you, the devil cannot get except he gets it from you. Who told the devil that it is the tree at the middle of the garden? That they should not eat from. Who? It was the woman. What was the question of the devil? Did God say you should not eat from any tree of the garden? Which means that the devil does not know directly the information, the secret that is making you or that can bring you down. Who told Delilah what will bring Samson down? Samson, not me. Who is telling the devil how to attack you? You are the same person. If you buy a new dress, you are on Facebook. If you are eating new food, you are on Facebook. You buy new shoe, Facebook. You buy new house, everything about your life, they don't need to come closer than to go on Facebook. At times, when I see some posts, you can block me, oh, that's your own business. At times, when I see some posts, I just shake my head. Even some of our dickens and dickens. You see a married naked and he's telling you that it's like this marriage thing doesn't pay and you man now post you write you say you give her i support you my girl at times i want to respond but my wife will say hold on honey don't do that i want to respond are you are you okay jesus the moment he was honored he knew that he became a target the moment God begins to honor you, you become a target. Begin to improve your security. Because as honor attracts friends, it also attracts enemies. The same way honor attracts friends, it attracts enemies. Are you learning something? Take this as a lesson. 
go and ask most of those kidnappers. I read a lot of news. They will tell you that most of the information about people that they get to attack people is on social media. Hello, me tell you, private life, go come on. Don't go and go and read social media. Watch it. You know what Nigeria has become now? We are praying that God should change our nation. But look at the kind of nation that we are in. If Nigeria were to be some other countries in the world, hear me, that match between Nigeria and Ghana will not be played. Because we lost almost 900 people a day before. Our president will have come out to say, well, because we are in a mourning state. Two, if Nigeria were to be other countries, the chief of defense staff will retire, will resign, I mean, that same day. Oh, my collector, I, I, for so so and so thing to happen under my watch, I'm tendering my resignation letter. And I don't think our president have done anything up to me up to now. Because by now, okay, some people are still missing. And this was the vision I saw. I saw this vision two years ago. I was telling my pastor friend. I said, I saw, I was shouting, there is anarchy in the land. Anarchy in the land. And my pastor friend said, Pastor, it's like God is giving you a, a, a national prophet calling to speak to nations. So, you know why I'm telling you this? I'm, I'm not saying to them now. I'm telling you because some of you are still thinking that stickers will protect you. Ulogba sticker, konlati shilo. Church. I shall not die. Oti ku. I pray they hear. Most people won't listen. I'm not boasting, I'm not bragging, listen. My mentor told us that it is our responsibility to secure ourselves. It is God's responsibility to now use that to protect us. He now told us an experience. I'll close with it. He said he went to minister in Lagos. And while they were coming, he met this man of God. He said, that man of God, I said, Bishop, how he greeted themselves? The man of God drove away. He said, as they got to a point, the police officers, his escorts that used to follow him, parked and told Bishop Scar to stop. He said, what happened? He said, we are getting a signal that robbery is on on the express road. You know what they now told him? He said, sir, please go to the middle of the car. Sit down at the middle. He said, one police officer sat here, right? One police officer sat to the left. He said, sir, please don't be offended what will be happening. They wind down and they started spraying the air. Ta -ta, ta -ta, ta -ta, ta. This one too. Ta -ta, ta -ta. They were shooting. He said, when they drove to the point of the robbery, the armed robbers had gone into the forest. The pastor that they met, left, they met him on the floor. He lied down the express. <laughs> armed robbers have laid them down. He said, now, pastor, what happened? Where's your car? He said, my car. Get your car. Follow the escort. He now told the escort people, put him at the middle. Put one escort in front, one behind. And let the man of God, let somebody drive, tell the man of God to come to, into my car. He said, the man of God said, Bishop, I want to man criticize him. Go he said, I want to to my car. I to my Now, listen. Easily no mama wale wanka oluwa ni olusagutan mi no lenu ona she be in only be Jesus she to you cannot come directly to me it got it was not like that before you can't come directly to me Philip had to see you and take you to Andrew. If it is necessary for me to see you, I will see you. 
If it is not necessary, I won't see you. The rise up on your feet. The more I know you.